Okay, uh, uh, thank you to all the panelists for uh, a very interesting uh, discussion. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I am very impressed with the sources which uh, Hanupam MM has used in this book. Uh, if you look at the many of the ASME's kind of renditions of the ways in which NRC and all these big, uh, how it was uh, taken to the people, that how people should energetically respond, relate to the idea. So many of the sources and many of the terms. Uh, are very interesting for me uh, because because I'm even familiar with many of the words. So Kelly Meli is one of the terms. So it it exhibits a kind of confusion among people what to do with NRC. So in that note, uh, I'll begin with the idea of Kelly Meli. In fact, it, it it is a very interesting note. Uh, and why I'm saying this is because that confusion means uh, different things to different sections of people. So you if you look at the entire trajectory of NRC, there is a there is a note of original innovation there are there are people with doubt uh, who are seen uh, with doubt through the linguistic lens religious lens through if they are part of bordering district they are looked in a very different way so say so many contingencies so in that note uh, let me begin with the note of the ideas of universal citizenship and differentiated citizenship i think so gautam bhati made a very interesting point that, uh, that the ways in which things are being articulated uh, at least from the uh, in terms of reclamation of citizenship, it, it is largely a universal note. But there is also a very, uh, there is a problem inherent within that idea is that, that of differentiated citizenship. So both, how do you kind of bridge that gap and that, that kind of gap uh, between the, for example, the way, way in which things are operating in Assam and the ways in which protest is happening in Delhi, in Sainbagh and maybe in Assam. So two different notes of protest and they cannot mean similar things. But the point is that protest needs to be looked at through the logic of state formation and social formation. And because we have looked at legal regimes that each legal regime is changing with time and many of the contingencies are, uh, contingencies are being addressed uh, every here and now. But I think that the social formations also needs to be looked at very critically because it is a logic of social power. Maybe the linguistic protest, maybe the, uh, maybe the, the ways in which uh, many of the sentiments and the issues and uh, agendas are being institutionalized in Assam Accord. All these have a role to play. I think so in terms of the hyphenated citizenship, uh, uh, I think that Anupama Mem's work could have uh, dealt with many of the, the ways in which social formation has played a very important role in the, in the ways in which the NRC and citizenship question is, uh, is right before us. And I think so, uh, I, I would love to wo use this word called ad hoc legal regimes. <laughs> because uh, it is not a kind of a regime which is very clear out there that 1955, okay, a certain kind of parliamentary formulation of uh, this is our law will emerge. Again, things are changing with the Assam Accord, the promise of people. So even the idea of we the people becomes a very uh, uh, problematic ground of how do we look at this idea, we the people of meaning what? Okay, because we is being rep is repeatedly constituted. So both the resurgent aspect of citizenship and the problematic aspect of how the we is constituted is a dangerous thing because everybody is talking about preamble. Even Prime Minister talks about preamble and he came up with the very interesting uh, how we need to make constitution very popular. So there are many contingencies which we need to look at and uh, I think so the I will rest my case with the uh, the problem of state formation and social formation there. Okay, thank you.